Welcome viewers to this new episode of the Denzo Tech Academy video tutorial series. Um, yeah, this uh, video tutorial topic will be the uh, Denzo device management system, the DMS system. And in the first part of this uh, video tutorial, I would like to show you how to install the DMS system, uh, how to get it ready and up and running in the first step. So, for uh, doing this, I have prepared a blank Windows system, which is uh, newly installed. So, what is important? Um, before we can successfully start up, we can go into this uh, folder here. And we see here there is the device management system access. So the device management system, the DMS does not come with an installer. It just comes with the folder. There is the executable inside. And this is the executable we will be running uh, to start up the server. So uh, to make it easier to start it up, what I will do, I will copy it and uh, paste a shortcut here on the desktop so that I have uh, an easy way to access uh, the application. But before we can do this, um, we need to make sure that some prerequisites are installed in advance. So um, I have packed everything together. So we need at least the .NET framework uh, 4.5 installed on the PC. This is the first prerequisite. As we're running here a Windows 10 machine, um, we don't need to install this because this is already installed as part of the Windows 10 system. But what is important is we need um, an SQL server, a Microsoft SQL server, um, Express Edition installed on the device. So I will start up this uh, installation now and then uh, we need to go through this. So it requires uh, some elevated rights here. So I need to have the administrator rights to start the installation, of course. And um, now we have to wait until the installation is coming up. There it is. So now the installation process will take some time. Um, when we are asked what installation type we want to have, we can select the basic installation. Of course, we have to accept the license uh, and then uh, we can simply click the install button. Now the installation starts and uh, depending on the machine and everything, it may take uh, a few minutes before the installation completes. So now we see the installation takes quite a while um, and now it is completed. So we get some information about the SQL Server Express Edition. Um, we don't need to do anything here. Everything will be done in the background then from the DMS system. So we can simply close this setup here. And uh, that was uh, the installation of the SQL Server. What else do we need to install? We have uh, Visual C redistributables, which we have to install on the machine. Um, I'm running here a Windows 10 on a 64-bit machine, but still we need to install both redistributables. So the 32-bit uh, redistributable and the 64-bit redistributable, because the 32-bit redistributable, we will be using it later on or needing it later on when we um, want to use the um, remote desktop um, connection to the Android device, so the remote screen connection. Good, so uh, yeah, let's go through this one. I start the 64-bit redistributable installation. It's coming up. I have to agree to the terms and conditions, and that's it. Uh, we have to confirm the installation, start the installation process. The 
redistributable installations is uh, going much faster than the SQL server installation for sure. So we wait until this one is completed. And um, then after having the 64-bit version installed, we do the same for the 32-bit version. That's it for the 64-bit one. Now installing the 32-bit version of the redistributables. Again, agree, OK, confirm, and installation is running. So after this has been completed now, we have all the prerequisites in place. And this is now the first point where we can try to start up the device management system and see what is happening. So on the first start, um, we might get information that uh, we need to confirm that we would like to run the application Now we need to start this up with um, elevated rights. So the device management system always need uh, administrator rights to run. And you see here the first start and the first run takes a while. So we have to be patient here. There is something going on in the background which we don't see right now. So don't panic at this point. Um, it will definitely start up and show us a screen. So um, we don't need to start it again and again. We just have to be patient here and wait until the screen is coming up. So we see there it is. It took a while, so no need to panic. This is normal. It needs a while until it starts up at least when we started it up in the first time. So what it wants to have from us now is that we are setting some passwords. Um, the first thing we need to set is the uh, password. It's an eight digit number um, for the settings, uh, which is used internally of uh, the system. Then we have uh, the pin lock password for devices, an eight digit number as well, and the communication password. And the communication password is quite important because when we um, start then adding devices to the DMS system, uh, we need to remember this communication password. So for keeping it as simple as possible. We need eight digit numbers here. So what I will do is I will take the numbers from one to eight as the password. That's the easiest one to remember for the demo installation. So there it is. Confirmation, doing this here again and confirmation again just to check uh yes correct 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 so oh here i am missing this one <clears throat> now i have all the passwords set and this is the point where the button is activated only at this point I can continue with my setup after having set these passwords. Now it says communication setting is not done. Um, the server needs to know which uh, IP address it is listening to. So here I have only one IP address. These are the ports which are used uh, for this. I can set up the log level here as well, but you see I cannot continue. So um, there are some other settings which I need to do on this screen. 
So let's go through this. Uh, task settings, I can leave this unchanged. Android password. Um, yeah, this is an Android password which needs to be set for the Android remote. And there is a password which is needed for the setting update on the BHD 1700 and 1800. So if we want to use the Android remote, we need to change the password here. To do this, we cannot enter it directly into the field. We need to click on the change password and set a new password. This password, the Android remote password, should not be only numeric. It is required that it is alphanumeric and following the usual password rules. So uppercase, lowercase, numbers, uh, in the best case, having special characters or something like this. So I will set up a password here and name it. Danzo2020 save this one um, then uh, i need a password here for the setting update uh, i need to change this password here as well this could be a numeric password again so i can put this here again i put my numbers one to eight in here save this one and now we see after having set up these passwords i can continue with my application but while we're here we can go through the settings um, password confirmation this is actually the screen um, where we set up the initial passwords here so we can check this these are the initial passwords and uh, i can uh, see the passwords here and then um, i can change the communication password here as well if i want to Device tab, I have some possibilities here to add additional tabs to my device settings overview. Um, device information output informa uh, interval, so um, we can configure the system that the device information which is regularly acquired is stored into a certain file um, on the server location so that we collect this information and then we can go through this information uh, if we want to check historic information on this. And then we can uh, set up the synchronized interval. I will leave this all now um, as the default settings and click OK to continue to the main application. And now the main application should be starting up. <clears throat> and while we're waiting on this, um, the device management system is of course uh, having some need for network communications. So sooner or later, the Windows firewall will come up with a notification and ask us if we would like to open up some firewall ports um, for enabling the device management system. So this is it, here it is. So for the private networks, uh, we allow access for the device management system. And um, after we have done this, now the system is up and running and um, so we completed the initial installation, we completed the initial configuration which is needed to start up the system the first time and now the system is up and running. Good, so um, this is it for this part of the tutorial. Um, we're splitting up the DMS uh, tutorials into several parts, so the next part will be be the adding devices to the device management system and uh, yeah this uh, next part will be released soon so uh, you can check out then uh, in the next part how we add our uh, BHT 1800 device to the device management system. I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. So if you have any questions, please feel free to ask uh, them to us and leave a comment below. We'll answer as soon as possible. Or you can send us a message. You can find our contact details as well in the description below. If you want to see more video tutorials from the Danzo Tech Academy or other video content from Danzo, check out our channel. 
or subscribe and, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on new videos. That's it from my side so far. Thank you very much and bye bye.